Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin, but we're actually in the workshop and today we're going to be making a simple soap that is suitable for beginners. So before we get started, I wanted to go over a few safety tips when it comes to soap making because we are going to be using lye. One thing you can see back here behind me is that I do have some rubber gloves and some goggles, but I also use the smaller vinyl gloves, which usually that's what I use because these in the summertime can get very hot. But you want to have some gloves and some eye protection because lye is caustic. So you want to be using those anytime that you're handling the lye or handling the soap right after we make it because it does burn. And I also keep on hand, right there, <laughs> I also keep on hand some vinegar and it will neutralize the lye if you get some splashed on your skin or something like that. I have used it in that case and immediately it does neutralize the lye and it doesn't burn. Another thing is I've got on a long sleeve shirt and that's going to help to protect my arms. You can wear an apron. Uh, you probably don't want to wear your best clothes when you're making soap just in case you do get some drops of lye or fresh soap on there because it can damage them. We're going to mix it with the liquid and there's a specific way to do that and I'll cover that when we get to that point and the lye will put, put off some fumes. Now I don't have a window in here that I can mix that in front of so I'm going to have a small fan set up to blow the fumes away as, that's, as that is uh, going through its chemical reaction. You don't want to put your face over it, fan or no fan, you don't want to put your face over it because the fumes are very strong but they only last probably less than a minute. So. Another safety tip as well, very important, is that you don't want to have young children underfoot while you're doing this because accidents can happen and probably not your pets either. I normally get my lie at one of the local old time grocery stores that we have here. I'm, I'm very blessed that I don't have to order it. Once I open a pack of it, the humidity will destroy it or weaken it over time. So usually what I do is after I've opened it, I will tie it up in a plastic bag just to help protect it a little bit and help it to last longer. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about equipment as well. Now you don't have to spend a lot of money, especially if you're starting out. Just browse some thrift stores and you'll probably find most of what you need there. Now I love staying that's what I use to mix my soap up in is stainless. Um, now as far as my hand tools for mixing soap, I like to use silicone, spatulas, or from occasionally I'll use wood. For measuring cups, I do use the little dollar ones from the dollar store. Uh, they work perfectly fine. Like I said, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I have a couple of glass ones that I, I measure my lye into, my dry lye that I like to do before I mix it, but um, the plastic ones are perfectly fine. In the old days, those sweet ladies had to stir the soap for hours to get it to emulsify and saponify. Let, so, soap goes through a chemical reaction or a chemical change, I should say. When you mix your lye water, your lye liquid with your fats, that process of making soap is called saponification. It saponifies. And in the old days, to, to do that, the ladies had to stir for hours, sometimes on end, to get it to what we call trace. But we've got modern appliances that are going to help us to bypass all of that. And you see that I, I have an immersion blender. And that cuts the time by eons. <laughs> Once you get your soap made, you got to pour it into something, so you're going to have to have some type of mold. Now, I made these wooden molds right here out of some scraps that we had, um, and I'll show you here. You have to line them. You're going to have to line them. That is actually wax deli papers from uh, one of the big box stores uh, that come in bulk, that you can buy bulk in, and it's the deli papers that are slightly waxed that they wrap sandwiches and stuff in. I found that that works great for my molds, but but you can use a flat from a from soda can, some soda pop. We call them Cokes. Everything's Cokes here in the South. But from soda cans or something like that, that makes a great mold. You can line it with uh, a lot of people use garbage can liners to line it in. Wax paper. Uh, I'm not sure about parchment paper. I've never used that. Freezer paper. I used freezer paper for a long, long time with the shiny side up where the uh, soap, your... Um, 
Soap contacts the shiny side and it won't stick to that, okay? So just anything. Uh, if you do come across, like, oh, well, orange juice cartons that are still paper or cardboard with the wax, those make great uh, soap molds. Anything kind of flexible that you can pop your soap out of or, or something that you can actually tear away from the soap, like the uh, orange juice cartons or milk cartons. And a couple of the things, and these are probably the most important things that you need as far as making soap. You're going to want some type of digital scale and also you're going to need a couple of thermometers so that you can monitor the uh, temperature of your lye because when you mix it with the liquid it is going to heat up and also you want to monitor the temperature of your warmed or melted solid oils so and we're going to bring those pretty close to the same temperature together so we do need separate thermometers because we don't want to mix the lye thermometer with the oil thermometer okay so I'm ready to make soap so I'll be right back with you I'm going to gather my supplies and we'll get started okay the first thing that you want to do slide this up where you can see it a little bit better and I'm, I don't think you'll be able to see the weight on there you just have to take my word for it but we're gonna tear our scale and bring it to zero okay and also another thing a couple of things I want to cover with you and I know this seems a little daunting right now but it'll make sense later uh, always make sure that your units of measurement are the same for every product that you use so we're gonna set this on ounces there we go because I, I sometimes I do grams but most of the time I do ounces so I want to be very attentive to that now for this particular recipe we're gonna use 80 ounces of lard and 24.29 ounces of liquid so you see why the digital scale is going to be very important here I got to tear that again it's not going to zero there we go and also 10.86 ounces of lye and that is a very important number so we want to be very accurate with that as well okay so now I'm going to start putting my lard in here and we're going to bring it to 80 ounces Okay, now, so we've got our 80 ounces of lard, and so next I'm gonna measure out our lye and our liquid. And the reason I refer to it to liquid rather than water is because I can use the same recipe in making my goat milk soap, where my goat milk is actually my liquid. And a lot of soap makers use a variety of liquids in their soaps, so that's why we say liquid rather than water. Okay, so now I'm going to tear my scale to zero and make sure that it's on ounces. Good. And I'm going to be using our harvested rainwater from the homestead here, but you, uh, I encourage you to use uh, distilled water if you don't have rainwater or some type of well water or purified water. Steer away from tap water because of the chemicals in it. It's not a good thing. Okay, so next on the list is lye, and you see that I do have my gloves on, and we need 10.86 ounces I'm actually gonna ooh, got a tear look at there all right so you can see that pretty good I'm not sure if you can see the numbers but we're gonna tear go to zero and this particular measuring cup I use only for measuring my lie 10.71 10.78 wake up seven eight eight five nine two so I'm actually gonna take a little bit out ten point seven eight nine ten point eight five I'm actually gonna leave it there now when you're dealing with your lie you want to always make sure that you put your lye into your liquid. You do not ever pour your liquid into your lye. Here we go. We're going to put in a little bit, just like that. 
and then I'm going to stir because we want it completely dissolved. We don't want any little lye crystals floating around free in our soap. We want it completely dissolved and it is heating up. Okay, so let's do this last little bit of lye. The reason that you don't want to put your liquid into your lye is it because it can cause it to volcano up and you can imagine the mess and the pain and the damage that that would cause. Okay, so I'm going to show you how lye heats up. Our crystals are completely dissolved. I'm not going to touch the bottom. I'm just going to come right up off the bottom. And you can see we're at 140 right there. Climbing to 150. Looks like it's going to settle down around 148 maybe 149 okay so that's caustic the end of this uh, temperature gauge is caustic so I'm going to set it right here on this paper towel dedicate that paper towel just to that and one thing I want to stress to you to do is that you have your molds prepared and ready because once we mix our lye which we're about to do our lye into our oil we're looking for a certain point of that and as soon as we get to that point as we're mixing then we need to pour up immediately now this is a very basic three ingredient soap but this is the foundation of all your soaps so when you do this you have learned a great majority of what you need to do as far as becoming a soap maker now I normally make larger batches of soap than this this is just two molds so what I did and I encourage you absolutely to do this if you ever start making soap or when you start making soap do not deviate from the recipe unless you run it through what's called a lie calculator it's very simple to use there's several of them on the internet but you have to do that if you deviate away from a, a, an established soap recipe. So the point I was getting at is that this is just for two moles. So I actually had to run that through a lye calculator because I make larger batches. And that's where I came up with my amount of liquid and lye. You're going to pour your lye into your oils. We're going to do this slow and easy. We don't want it to splash up. And I'm going to stir while I'm doing that. being very very careful to not splash then we're going to set this lye bowl in a safe place away from everything and I will get back to it later when I clean up all of my equipment okay so I'm just going to stir this to blend for just a bit and then we're going to start with the immersion blender So what you're going to do with your immersion blender is you're just going to pulse. And then you'll stir. And uh, one reason why I do this is I'm just trying to extend the life of my immersion blender for one thing. And uh, it's just, there's no need to just do it non-stop right now. You want to be, one thing I didn't show you is that when I put it in here, I actually tipped it sideways to do what I call burp it to get any air that might have been trapped underneath the end of the blender. What we're looking for, and this is going to take a few minutes, we're looking for something called trace. And what trace is, is when this starts thickening up, and you can actually take your blender out and the liquid that that drips on top or the oil the mixture that drips on top will actually sit on the surface momentarily or even a line of it would sit on the surface momentarily so i'm going to get to blending and i'll be back with you in a bit and show you what i'm talking about <laughs> So I want to remind you, at this point, this is still caustic, so you want to just be cautious and not splash any up on your spill any. Okay, you can see, this is just a quick update. If you look, I'm not sure that you can tell, but it does hold its shape just a little bit when I pull the blender out. So we are very close to trace. I'm gonna just make a few more rounds and then we'll get ready to pour it up in the molds. Oh 
Yeah, see how it's, can you, I don't know, if, yes, you can see how it's kind of holding its shape on the surface like that. So that's where we want to be. So I have a little tray that I set this in because this, even now, this is still very caustic. So I'm going to set my immersion blender off to the side and we're going to pour up in our molds. This is a beautiful soap. It's so creamy white. Set that safely off to the side. And we're going to set our first mold down. And I just want to caution you still, this is very caustic. So we want to be careful, but oh, that is so pretty. It's just as beautiful and white. I love making lard soap. Okay, so we're going to stop right about there. Go ahead and pour in my other mold. And then we'll even them up if we need to. That'll be easier to pour. Oh, look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it sit for 24 hours. This is beautiful. This is just perfect for molding. So I'll have to clean up my equipment. But all of that will sit until tomorrow, especially anything that touched the soap, and it will clean itself. That will be soap. Now, I'll be a little bit careful because the soap, it will be saponified. It will not be cured. So uh, I may use my uh, Playtex gloves over there to wash it with, but it will clean itself up. So that's another wonderful thing. The cleanup can wait until tomorrow. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to set these in the refrigerator. I'm just trying to, I love to kind of make some shapes on the top and I'm not going to take too much time to do that. But just to give you an idea, you can play with it. You can take a plastic spoon and you can make waves in it. It's just a, a fun, it's a fun skill to have and you can get better and better at it and you can embellish your soaps, you can personalize them. You can do anything you want to with them. Now, I don't add colors. If there is a color, it's natural. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Okay, so we're going to stop right here. I'm going to set these in the refrigerator. And it's not absolutely necessary to set them in the refrigerator, but I don't prefer that my soaps gel. I like for them to say, stay just like this. Now, when they gel, and a lot of soap makers do prefer that, uh, it takes on a little bit more of an opaque appearance. I just don't care for that. So I set them in the refrigerator to help them cool off a little bit faster. And then tomorrow, I will be back out here and we're going to pull these out of the mold and we're going to cut them and you'll get to see the first slice off of this beautiful soap. So I'll be back with you in just a moment to share some words. Well, you know I love making this type video. I love to teach skills that I have and pass them on to others. And I hope that you learned some things from this video. I hope you gain some confidence and that you'll approach soap making and not be afraid. You just apply those safety tips and a little common sense and you're going to turn out a beautiful product. But I do encourage you though, if you have some questions or if you have some feedback or some ideas on some other soap making videos that you would like for me to share, please comment comment below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and I invite you to subscribe and to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the great videos that we have out there. But I want to share some beautiful words with you before we go. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless.